Yo, what's the deal, fam? Check this out. Every Monday, I do something called Esco's Monday Motivation, where I take maybe a Nas verse or a dope line, and I post it in the community section, right? So this particular day, I had a comment from TJ, and he stated, Ease, do you count distant relatives in Nas' discography, or would you put it into a collaboration section? If you did count it along with Nas' other albums, where would you rank distant relatives? My reply was, I was on the fence for years about this, but if Drillmatic, Jay's Volume 2, and Rock La Familia, Kanye's My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy are considered in these respective artists' discographies, so is Distant Relatives. Top 8. Now, in your estimation, I need your opinion. What is the difference between an album that has a bunch of features and an album that is a collaboration between two artists? reason for asking is that, you know, we often debate, analyze, discuss, you know, the legends, discographies. And I feel like sometimes there's a bunch of moving of goalposts. And also, would you consider distant relatives to be part of Nas's discography? And where would you rank it? Those are my two questions. You have a great day out there, you heard, and go get your Gia. Yo, what's the deal, fam? Hope you all are doing well out there. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I have a question, something real simple, regarding two legends, Primo and Pete Rock. Why is DJ Premier revered or held to a higher standard or even ranked higher than Pete Rock? I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but in my estimation, it just seems as though within the culture, he's a bit more revered, right? If you think about their catalogs, not even catalogs, careers. Pete Rock has timeless records. He arguably has the most timeless record in hip hop history, right? With they reminisce off over they reminisce over you off um 1992 Mecca and the Soul Brother, right? That's 92. Wow, long time ago. Still timeless. Everyone knows that record when it comes on, right? He had a unique sound, which they both do, right? Pete Rock was very progressive in the sense that he didn't um, invent sampling. You know, they went from uh, break beats to Molly Mar coming in with the, the, the stabs or tiny bits of um, chunks of records. But he was progressive. Pete Rock, that is, in the sense of he would take samples from six or seven different records. They all in different keys. And somehow he put them together and they all flowed and it worked musically all in the same key. I don't know how he did it but he just made it sound so musical and it was a beautiful thing to listen to, right? He was also an innovator in the sense that, at least I can remember, he was like the first dude that was like narrating or ad-libbing off, off, off track, so who wasn't the primary artist? Prior to Diddy, like he was doing that. He's not just a beat maker, he's a producer, although he has instrumental albums, he's produced full-length albums from the likes of, obviously, C.L. Smooth, his, his band mate. Um, he had, um, I know he had did a record with uh, Smith & Wesson. He got joint with Smoke Dizza. The list goes on and on. He has work. Major placements on timeless records. He has classic records. And he's some of your favorite producer's favorite producer. But I'm always asking, why is he not revered in the same sense? Like Primo, to this day, whether old school or new generation, he is welcome with open arms. Is it because of his personality? That's what he, um, people gravitate towards him or to him? Or do they just feel as though his music is that much better? It aged well? But that's the question I always ask because these are two pillars from like the time that I fell in love with hip hop. And both of them were so creative and it's not, their sound isn't played out. They've, they have their own unique sound, but they still gotten better over time. So the question I'm asking is because I know you're all fans of these individuals too. Why is Primo more revered? Is he better in your estimation? I know outside of studio, like based off interviews and things of that nature, it feels as though he's a bit more um, approachable in a sense. You know, and he's a little bit more level-headed. I know Pete Rock had an instance where he would get upset over everything when, when Kanye said on the new version of Pete Rock on the, um, the Slum Village joint, he got upset over that. I know he had fallen out with, like, C.L. Smooth's bandmate. I know he was, he was playing, like, the sense of a gatekeeper 
for a while with the younger generation. And he had a little incidents not too long ago with the whole versus situation where he was kind of like, for lack of a better term, seeking attention. But that has nothing to do with music. My question is, why is he so, why, he, why isn't he revered in a sense like DJ Premier? Is it because Primo, Primo is better? Is it because Pete Rock doesn't have the, um, the output like Primo does? Is it because of things outside of music? These are questions I have because even when you listen to Pete Rock and Nas, you would say, yo, the chemistry, just off, the world is yours. You're like, why didn't we get more of that? Those are questions I always ask. Is it because the artists are not feeling his music anymore? Or is it relationship-based? And if it's relationship-based, that's heartbreaking because an individual that talented who's given so much to the game, for them not to garner the accolades in which they deserve really doesn't sit well with me. Not to say that it's wrong, because you don't, you can't really um, control what happens and interactions with it within the music business, right? That I'm just a fan. But at the same time, it's almost as if you want him to get his flowers, but is he the one holding himself back from getting the flowers? Not that awards matter, but Primo quietly is a three-time Grammy winner. Just from simply being him, he didn't even sell out. When he was doing the Christina Aguilera stuff, he still had break beats and all that in there. He kept it Primo. When he won the Grammys, what a D'Angelo for um, Devil's Pie. That was primo. Still funky. Still chopping up samples. So my question to you here at the Ease Experience, I appreciate all of you guys' um, opinions and your outlook on things. Because I learned just like I'm, I'm, I'm spewing knowledge, right? What is your opinion on why Pete Rock isn't revered or considered in the same... Um, echelon when it comes to uh production is dj premier i could be overthinking it but i just don't feel as though sometimes pete rock get some people forget about him and i don't know if it's because of music or is it because of something else so it's a two-part question did you even believe that he's in the same stratosphere on the same <laughs> bracket as dj premier that pete rock is he in the same um Lane is DJ Premier in the sense of should they be spoken of in the same conversations? And secondly, why do you feel as though he is not revered in the same way? I come to you humbly asking you because I value your opinion. And these are things I think about all the time. I was just listening to One Two Pass It off the D&D All-Stars album with Mad Lion and Dougie Fresh and KRS-One, Smith & West, J. Rue. And I'm just listening to it like, yo, Primo, like he's so well respected. He's so well loved by all the artists, even back then. And it continues to this day. Why isn't Pete Rock carried in the same way? Let me know. I just want to know. I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section. Once again, I appreciate all of you. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And as we always stay here at the Ease Experience, go get yours. We out of here. Hey, yo, E.